Hi, during this National Nutrition Week, we thought of bringing some focus on diet in various medical disorders. So taking the discussion forward in today's video, let's discuss on the diet in psoriasis. Psoriasis is an autoimmune disorder. Now what do I mean by this? Auto is own or self and immune is immune system. So our own immune system is attacking the healthy skin cells. Now this is happening because immune system is misreading the healthy skin cells to be invaders or to be the cells that are attacking our body and immune system by nature the role of it is to protect our body from anything uh, externally or internally that is attacking our body now this misjudgment or misreading is happening because of some abrasion the exact reason is not known now psoriasis is usually a genetic disorder um, which is autoimmune and inflammatory now when your immune system is trying to protect your body from the so-called invaders though they are healthy skin cells in this situation it, it leads to inflammation now this inflammation you see on the outside as red um, skin that usually has powdery or thick texture to it which is typical psoriatic lesion uh, if you want to know more about what causes psoriasis what are the symptoms of psoriasis and what is the medical line of treatment of psoriasis i've made a whole series on psoriasis that is up on my youtube channel uh, you could go and check out the a highlight of psoriasis on my channel and everything about psoriasis is mentioned there so in today's video we are, we are going to be discussing mainly the diet in psoriasis so now since i've given you a brief of what psoriasis is let's look into uh, what triggers psoriasis now because although it is an autoimmune disorder although it is genetic and although the exact reason is not known it is very evident that there are certain triggers that could trigger episodes of psoriasis now there are so many triggers like um, seasonal variation um, triggers like food, taking certain uh, food can cause psoriasis, which we are anyways going to get to, taking certain medications and certain situations wherein your immunity could be decreased, like when you travel, for example. So all these triggers and of course, uh, excess consumption of alcohol and smoking. So these are certain triggers that could lead to triggering of your psoriatic episode. So what's the role of diet in psoriasis, you ask? A big role. I cannot stress enough on the importance of diet especially in this particular autoimmune disorder called psoriasis now uh, just to give you an insight when i when i was doing my post graduation when i still haven't done enough research on diet and psoriasis we were mainly treating psoriatic patients on medical line of treatment and of course we were able to give results but um, the results that we are able to give after i've incorporated diet um, and after i've started to treat psoriasis in a very integrated way the results that we are able to give is just um, unmatched so the role of diet in psoriasis acts at it, it, it has a lot of benefits one it, it is able to reduce the severity of your symptoms when you have an episode it is able to control the number of episodes you're going to have and it's also going to improve the overall quality of your life which is very 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 important so why isn't everybody with psoriasis following the diet because the diet with psoriasis is very difficult to follow it has uh, um, it says no to some of the most commonest fruits and vegetables that you eat and you would probably love and enjoy to eat so it's a little difficult to follow typical psoriasis diet um, but if you follow the diet uh, in its truest manner the results are amazing so what's the rule of thumb when it comes to psoriasis diet it's simple now we know psoriasis is an inflammatory condition right so there is inflammation and unrest within the system so all you have to do is to focus on foods that are anti-inflammatory so the basis of or the foundation of the psoriatic diet is an anti-inflammatory food that helps in calming your body nourishing your body soothing your body and helps in um, taking care of the unrest that is in the body so one major word for psoriasis diet is anti-inflammatory food also at dna we stress the diet in psoriasis so much that um, you know we usually have follow-up calls with all our patients and clients but with psoriasis we also have follow-up calls with their spouses or with their cook so much that we follow up on their diet uh, so we ask if the patient is following their diet what are the foods that they're eating what are they avoiding um, how are they improving from time to time based on their diet so we also have a diet evaluation chart when patients come with psoriasis so that's how much diet is important in treating psoriasis so after so much research talking to experts and reading a lot of material on diet in psoriasis um, i have come up with a diet chart for psoriasis called dna psoriatic diet so we have 
categorically divided uh, the foods into foods you can eat, foods that you can eat in moderation and foods that you should completely be avoiding. Um, so I would be sharing this diet chart towards the end of the video. So when it comes to psoriasis diet, at least at DNA, we divide it into foods that you can eat, foods you should should or can eat in moderation and foods you should be completely avoiding when we do this categorization what do we mean or what do we expect our patients to do at least is that to follow this to the dot when you have an active episode now for example say you have psoriasis and the lesion is active you are supposed to follow this diet to the dot but when you do not have episodes you know um, you just you just recovered from an episode and you do not have any episode currently you're not actively psoriatic you could indulge in some of the foods that we've asked not to eat or consume but do not indulge yourself um, just eat it in moderation and if you see your symptoms are flaring up if you see you might have another attack of psoriasis uh, maybe because you were exposed to one of the triggers that I've earlier mentioned then completely cut yourself off foods that we've asked uh, you not to eat so you could relax a little bit in between the episodes um, but completely avoid and follow the diet to the dot when you have an active episode so let's look at foods that you should completely avoid uh, so various categories being gluten, red meat, milk and milk products, processed foods, nightshades, alcohol. Psoriasis being an autoimmune disorder has found to have increased markers for uh, gluten sensitivity that is sensitive to a protein called gluten um, and celiac disease which is based on gluten sensitivity is also an autoimmune disorder and usually people with autoimmune disorders have overlapping conditions. So when somebody is, su is suffering with autoimmune disorder especially when they feel a little bit sensitivity to gluten we, we ask them to completely avoid uh, gluten or gluten products. So when we say gluten the foods that you should be avoiding are wheat and wheat derivatives rye barley malt um, and the products like pasta noodles baked goods processed foods sauces um, beer and malt beverages as well so try and stay away from gluten especially if you find that um, you know your body is not at rest after eating any of the gluten products which probably means you have gluten sensitivity please stay away and especially if you have a very exacerbated episode if you're if you're having a serious episode and you are on a lot of medical treatments try and avoid gluten just to ease your body the next category being red meat dairy including eggs um, so this category foods have high doses of polyunsaturated fatty acids which is directly linked to psoriatic lesions um, in most of the scenarios where i have cut my patients off from milk and milk products we have seen tremendous improvement um, in their psoriatic lesions over a period of time so milk milk products and uh, red meat which includes um, beef sausage bacon even processed red meats eggs and egg dishes milk milk products should be completely avoided the most important category the most um, painful category i would say to avoid is nightshades whenever i say this my patients and their spouses are very unhappy about it but it is what it is so nightshades includes tomatoes eggplant peppers of all colors and potatoes when i say tomatoes it includes your tomato ketchup sauce or any processed food that has tomatoes in it including your salsa i know a lot of patients like i just mentioned are very unhappy when they uh, listen to this and we have situations where uh, you know the wife or the cook when they cook at home they say we have to prepare two separate set of meals because we cannot even imagine cooking without tomatoes uh, but like i said again it is what it is avoiding and cutting yourself off of tomatoes nightshades has a significant improvement in the overall inflammatory situation going on inside your body so try to cut off these um, vegetables from your diet especially when you have active lesions you could just ease a little bit and indulge um, or eat these vegetables when you do not have an active episode and when you are not surrounded by triggers but otherwise uh, these items should be cut off your diet now another set where again people are not going to be happy, happy about is alcohol excess consumption of alcohol and smoking has immense um, role to play in triggering your psoriatic lesions or worsening the existing lesions so moderation I wouldn't even say moderation when you have active lesions it's completely cut yourself off of alcohol and smoking when you have active lesions but when you do not have active lesions and you're between episodes or when you um, uh, you know when your body is not showing any sense of inflammation 
moderation is still okay but when you have active lesions completely cut yourself off um, don't curse me for saying this again it is what it is it is not i am not saying all this it is the research and it is um, it is proved i have also experienced it when treating my patients when we cut them off of all these what i've just mentioned there is a lot of improvement the next category of foods which comes in all the medical disorders or even otherwise is processed foods um, I don't think there's any condition that will say eating processed food is good right so this high calorie extremely tasty good looking packaged food is not going to do any good to your body with a particular disorder or otherwise um, so but we're all humans we do like to eat certain kind of food sometimes so sometimes being the key here um, when you have active lesions again a no-no uh, nothing of the processed food bracket should come into your diet when you do not have active lesions again when you're not closer to any triggers then you could probably eat a little bit here and there but um, try to avoid processed food at any cost so the foods that come under this category are processed meats pre-packaged food canned fruits or vegetables or uh, anything that is processed with high sugar salt and fat so are there any other foods that you should be avoiding absolutely last but not the least are fruits fruits that you should be avoiding if you have psoriasis include sour grapes all citrus fruits pineapple i know most of you are saddened by looking at the list that you shouldn't be having if you have psoriasis so now to cheer you up let's look at the foods that you can eat if you have psoriasis like we discussed the base of food or diet in psoriasis is anti-inflammatory food so let's look at fruits and vegetables that are anti-inflammatory so you can include broccolis cauliflowers brussels sprouts now if you remember in the one of the previous videos wherein we discussed on diet in thyroid these cruciferous vegetables were asked to be avoided or to be eaten in moderation if you have thyroid disorders but they are good in case of psoriasis so this is how diet differs in various medical disorders so go by your lifestyle go by your medical disorders go by um, the things that are natural to you um, the, which is why we ask you to consult a nutrition expert or a particular doctor who is expert in the field and not take suggestions by anybody and everybody around you because everything varies with your condition the other vegetables being green leafy vegetables like kale spinach uh, fruits like cherries dark fruits berries um, you could also eat grapes but not sour grapes as we discussed in the previous video you could still eat sweet grapes um, because they are anti-inflammatory fruits so the next category of foods that are rich in omega-3 fatty acids can be consumed like fatty fish uh, though there is still ongoing research on the exact role of omega-3 fatty acids in psoriasis there is a little research showing that omega-3 fatty acids can help in psoriatic lesions so we recommend fatty fish like salmon that can be consumed uh, when you have psoriasis the next category are the oils uh, healthy vegetable oils that have higher omega 3s to omega 6 ratio now like fatty fish um, this healthy vegetable oils also can do good to your psoriatic lesions so look into vegetable oils look into oils like olive oil um, peanut oil flaxseed oil so this could be used for sorting your vegetables or to be sprinkled upon your salads and we also recommend topical application of these oils and sun exposure which will help really help with psoriatic lesions so in our practice we um, ask the patients or clients to apply coconut oil olive oil or uh, like which is this is flaxseed oil and to have sun exposure for about 10 to 15 minutes depending on the percentage of your body that's affected with psoriasis and then immediately to take bath we do not recommend application of oil and sitting throughout the day we only recommend oil application prior to your bath uh, for about 10 to 15 minutes with sun exposure let's look at the role of supplementation in psoriasis now a 2013 research by national psoriatic committee has stated the importance of uh, supplementation in psoriasis and the supplements that are usually recommended are uh, fish oils or supplements that are good with omega 3s um, vitamin d vitamin b12 and selenium now these supplements will help in improving the inflammatory situation in the body will improve the overall uh, health of the skin so along with these in my practice i also recommend zinc now there is no study or enough research linking zinc in treating psoriatic lesions but zinc is proven to be anti-inflammatory it improves the overall immunity and health of the skin so i end up prescribing zinc as well um, but all of these supplements are being are, will be prescribed based on the current blood work of the uh, patient so we look at the current level 
levels of the vitamins before we prescribe any of the supplements uh, especially with vitamin D now if you're seeing this video or if you read it somewhere that vitamin D is good for psoriatic patients do not self supplement consult your doctor after um, looking into your vitamin D levels vitamin D is not a water soluble vitamin it's a fat soluble vitamin so excess of vitamin D will cause toxicity so always make sure that you look into your blood uh, levels before you uh, start on any supplements that's what, even, that, that's what we even at a clinic do we look at the current blood work and provide the right supplements based on their diet so if you feel they're not getting sufficient omega-3s through their diet that is when we supplement omega-3s we supplement vitamin d if we look at their vitamin d levels being low or if they're marginally okay we still supplement vitamin d because vitamin d helps with uh, treatment of psoriatic lesions and also we look at their zinc uh, zinc levels before we prescribe so supplements will definitely help with psoriatic lesions um, but these are not to be self prescribed uh, you need to consult your doctor before you put yourselves on these supplements so the first diet here is dr pagano's diet it is one of the most popular diets among um, wellness health and psoriatic communities so this diet emphasizes on eating lots of fruits and vegetables uh, to avoid certain foods like meat seafood dairy eggs and completely avoiding red meat, nightshades, citrus fruits and processed foods. He also has a book called Healing Psoriasis, The Natural Alternative, which emphasizes the importance of diet and a healthy lifestyle in order to treat psoriasis. So the other diet is the gluten-free diet. So this again emphasis on avoiding gluten, uh, especially if you have gluten sensitivity. This according to me is not a foolproof solution because avoiding only gluten is not the solution for psoriasis uh, sometimes in indian communities uh, we are not as gluten sensitive uh, you know as western communities so we end up eating gluten but never experience gluten sensitivity so some of the psoriatic patients can eat gluten in moderation if uh, you know your system your intestines are able to tolerate it so gluten free diet is not the only solution for psoriasis in my practice so the next diet a lot of people discuss is vegan diet vegan is excellent but again like i say it's not sufficient in psoriasis because you end up consuming certain fruits and vegetables that are uh, pro-inflammatory especially with psoriatic lesions um, so you will still have to avoid nightshades tomatoes uh, even even with the vegan diet so vegan is again not a foolproof solution according to me the next one being the mediterranean diet so this diet has a lot of health benefits with many chronic diseases not just with psoriasis um, so there's lo there's a survey that has been conducted in 2017 which said people who are adhering to strict maintenance diet have an edge over other counterparts that are not consuming maintenance diet and it has shown that the severity of psoriatic lesions is much lesser in people taking maintenance diet the basis of this diet again is to be pro-inflammatory and there is also portion control when it comes to maintenance diet so this being pro-inflammatory having a portion control helps not just with psoriasis um, but also with a lot of other chronic illnesses and including diabetes and people looking for weight loss portion control and being pro-inflammatory is the key for this diet autoimmune protocol diet or AIP is very very close to the protocol that we have given you uh, on to avoid certain foods and certain vegetables so this diet essentially includes only certain fruits and vegetables and herbs that you could mix uh, in various proportions so this is very very difficult to follow uh, which is why it has got extremely good results um, this again you can just look at the chart we have just shared with you this is kind of uh, including and excluding certain foods that we have mentioned the next category is the keto diet i do not like keto diet in psoriatic patients because in keto diet you are uh, meant to have low carb diet so in low carb diet when you do that you're essentially eliminating many anti-inflammatory foods like vegetables and fruits so it is not going to do any good to uh, patients with psoriasis you are essentially um, uh, reducing the anti-inflammatory foods and probably end up eating pro-inflammatory foods so this could even trigger your psoriatic lesions so if you are a person suffering with psoriasis um, do not start yourself on keto diet just keep your diet simple uh, in the previous video we have discussed on foods that you can consume foods you should be avoiding foods you can take in moderation we are also sharing the chart uh, that we prescribe at dna in this video as well so please go through the chart make your own diet 
plan from the fruits and vegetables that you can consume and avoid the fruits and vegetables we have asked you to avoid especially when you have active psoriatic lesions you could consume certain foods in moderation when you do not have an active episode but if you're having active episode try and adhere to the foods that we've asked you to eat uh, do not go crazy with this kind of diets because something that works for you might not necessarily work with, to work with other person it depends on your lifestyle your body type the foods that you like and you enjoy as well i might like a certain vegetable which you might not like or enjoy so you do not like you do not end up liking your meal which again will add stress and stress is again a trigger to psoriasis so make sure your meals are healthy and happy uh, as well so try to include vegetables from the little bit of uh, choices that you have try to pick the ones that you really like and try to make a diet plan that you can stick and adhere to so if you go with diet plans that are uh, that are uh, you know all over the internet and somebody else is recommending you might not end up adhering to the diet because you are not liking uh, uh, that particular that particular diet so make your own diet plan with the choices that you have um, so I hope this uh, information has helped you guys if you have any more queries you can reach to us on info at dnskinclinic.in until then you guys stay healthy and stay happy